Okay, I wanted to make this very brief movie to show you guys something that I just uh, miraculously discovered. Let's say you're cranking out or making PowerPoints. Here's a PowerPoint I'm making that's called endocrine. So as you can see, the first slide has a bunch of microscopic pictures on it. And of course, one of the nice things about putting static captured images on it is that you could write on it and label things. But let's say you wanted to go a step further and you had what you can see here is a uh, image slide that is zoomable in the FPX format. And this one I named PIT for pituitary. I am dragging that thing onto a blank PowerPoint slide. I'm dragging another one called THY onto the same blank page. Now I'll drag a third one called PTH and put that somewhere on the blank page as well. And finally, I'll drag over something here called ADR. Now, if you wanted to actually make these look nicer, you could kind of make them bigger or straighten them out a little bit if you want to be neat about the whole thing. Or you could even make them so they're really big you know, filling up a good quadrant of the page, let's say. So in your first PowerPoint, you have actually captured static images of pituitary and the thyroid and the parathyroid and the adrenal. But uh, what you can do now is actually take those slides that you've created and click on them. And in the process of doing that, you will put your entire microscope onto your PowerPoint slide. So here you have a picture of a pituitary. And if you wanted to zoom in on it, you could. And if you wanted to move it around a little bit, you could. And if you wanted to zoom up even more to show individual cells, you could. And if you wanted to just keep clicking like a regular microscope, to zoom in or to zoom out, you could do that as well. So what I've discovered here is a way to put a power, way to put microscopic slides with virtual microscopy onto an actual PowerPoint page. And that makes it very convenient. And now when you save this PowerPoint, it is going to keep the data from these image files on it. And it's a uh, very, very heavy memory here because they're huge image files. So after this is done being saved, I will actually uh, click it and delete the other files. And you can see that even though these files are deleted now, and the PowerPoint is saved. I can now click on the adrenal, for example, and get the same microscopic image. So this is really adds another feature to uh, teaching pathology because rather than just put a simple blank static image of a substance on it, you can actually put your whole microscopic slide on your PowerPoint page and demonstrate things much easier or even start blowing them up like crazy if you want to. Okay, well, thank you very much.